Hey guys, this is Magic here, and uh, if you had to name the number one most detrimental, most like barrier thing to new people joining the game, besides net deckers and net decks, because I think we all know that's the winner. Clearly, like that's not even up for debate. That is a fact. The second biggest barrier, most like preventative thing for people joining the game, building a deck, and going to F and M. What would it be? Well, the answer I always hear from everybody is dual lands being rare or just dual lands being expensive. But then people say it's expensive because they print them at rares. Lands are lands. Why the hell aren't they printed at, you know, common slots since everybody needs them? I mean, everybody needs to fix their colors on anything past mono. So virtually every deck and every player needs these lands. Why the hell are they rare? Like, that just creates artificial scarcity and there's not enough to go around. Like, why doesn't Wizards knock them down at least to the uncommon slot so that everybody can get away with a cheaper deck? Well, the usual answer is because, hello, it props up the box EV. I mean, you're looking at, like, a huge drop in money if all of a sudden all the dual lands are removed from Kaladesh or, oh my god, Khans of Tarkir. So that's the, the common word on the street, right? And I've been known to even say that in videos. Um... I've been thinking about it. I might not be 100% correct about this because there's way more to this than you think because of like economics and math and all that crap. So let's go through a scenario and this is just going to like blow your mind about how this works. And keep in mind, this is all theory, but it's based in pretty well established economic fact. So let's say they come up with a new land and it's a rare and it's, it's the, I don't know, the Alman Cat, well, actually, they've already announced these. <laughs> the Hour of Devastation um, lands. Oh, wait, they don't usually put rare dual lands in second sets. It's not very common. Okay, the Atlazan, assuming that's a real set, the Atlazan triple lands, okay? So these are your big color-fixing perfect lands. So they will say, come in untapped. They tap for three colors, your choice of three colors, and the only parameter is you have to return any basic land to your hand when you put them into play. So you're not really plus one in your mana, but you are next turn guaranteed. So it's like late, but it's fixing right now. And then, you know, maybe landfall, maybe delirium, maybe you could chuck the card into the graveyard at some point. You know, there might be some tricks you could do there too. So, you know, your general pretty nice sought after lands. Once again, very good new concept, usable in commander people would want them. So they'll be, we'll say, 5 to $10. You know, that's your typical dual land price. Like, if you look at Kaladesh, I mean, they're all kind of 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, 7, right around the launch time, depending upon color popularity. And uh, they kind of hovered around there, a couple drop, a couple went up. But, um, you know, it wasn't like fetch lands where it's like, oh my god, shell out, you know, 250 bucks just for your land base in your three-color deck. But still, I mean... <laughs> You want hissing quagmires and blooming marshes? You are looking at about $100 right now. I mean, that was the vast majority of the expense of my last deck. So people aren't necessarily wrong when they blame the land base for being the prohibitive thing, keeping people out of magic, because they'll be like, oh, I really want to use this awesome white removal and this awesome black creature. I'm going to make a white black deck. Well, no, you're not, unless you're rich. And I mean, I'd even consider any deck above 50 bucks to be prohibitively expensive to a significant portion of the players. I mean, some people don't have jobs, they're kids, they get maybe an allowance if they're lucky. Some people are just broke as hell like I am, you know, <laughs> they're in debt, they have some kind of, you know, whatever this, that bill to pay or their car just blew up or, you know, whatever. <laughs> they're still, they're still recovering from the wedding, which costs way the hell too much. Everybody's got reasons that they don't have money, so... You know, some people buy $300 decks and they're cool with that because they're going to play it for 12 weeks and win tons of prizes with it and whatever. That or they're just rich. So it's like, who cares? I mean, you look at other hobbies, like I always compare it to fishing. I mean, you could buy a crappy line secondhand at, you know, Goodwill, or you could buy like a really nice, you know, graphite line or whatever and the whole boat and an engine. And all that. By the time you're into it, you're like three grand into it. Hell, you even need a fishing hat to keep the sun out of your eyes. I mean, that ain't cheap either. So compared to other complete hobbies, just money dump complete not necessities at all, which, sorry guys, I'd consider magic to be that. Yeah, it's actually not that expensive of a hobby, even if a deck does cost three or $400. It's even somewhat comparable to other TCGs. I mean, some Pokemon decks are up there too. You know, Shaman, come on. But wouldn't it be nice... And wouldn't it help the game by adding more customers if they made the dual lands just 
or all the good rare color fixing lines, I should say, triples, duels, fetches, whatever, if they would make them all, you know, common slot or uncommon slot, wouldn't that solve the problem, right? Everybody would be happy. Oh, but that would crash the box EV because now the supply went through the roof, right? Not necessarily. Uh, if there are, and I think this is the typical ratio, I'm way too lazy to check, but if there's like 50 rares in a set and 90 uncommons, the fact that there's one rare in a booster and three uncommons isn't quite as drastic. So people say, oh, put it in the uncommon slot, there will be triple as many. Well, that's not how math works. I do believe that if it went from 50 to 90, we'll just say 50 to 100 for simplicity, um, and then they were triple printed volume-wise in every set, uh, or every booster, you would only have one and a half times as many. Now, do you think 1.5 times the supply of fetch lands would have taken them from $20 down to $2? No, they would not. And here's the other thing. It doesn't quite work as nicely as that. That's like the simplified version of economics and supply and demand, which even I don't fully understand myself, but here's my crap version of it. Let's say the player base as a whole is going to build X amount of decks and those X amount of decks result in 10 million lands. They, they need on average 10 million total lands, a dual, like really good, rare, dual, triple, whatever lands. Well, if you print them in the uncommon slot, they still need, you know, 10 million lands. So single sellers would, uh, Make the unwise decision. I'll get back to why it's unwise. They'll make the unwise decision to sell the lands for like $2, we'll say, because I think Aether Hub is like $2 right now, maybe 3 so that's the perfect example. Everybody needs them. Everybody plays them, mostly. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they've maintained their price ever since they came out. They just haven't dropped because people really want them. Oh, but now instead of five rare slot lands that are all worth an average of seven dollars, we'll say, now they're um they're going to put them in the uncommon slot and they're only worth two dollars. So the box EV drops from a hundred down to seventy or eighty, we'll say. Well, at eighty, single sellers aren't gonna keep opening them because that's not profitable. They pay like seventy-eight to eighty-six a box usually, sometimes seventy-six if they're lucky. Um, so that, that isn't worth the, the shipping costs, the stamps, the top loaders, the time, the staff, the sorting, any of that, you would lose money. So they will stop opening boxes. If they stop, wizards will stop printing them at the end of the day. It's not quite that neat and tidy and exact and one day response, but in general, that's how it works. I don't know how print to demand standard sets are, but we'll just pretend that it's perfectly flawlessly printed demand. So, oh no, the box EV stopped at, you know, 70 bucks or whatever, and now nobody's opening it. Well, let's say the the total result where it stopped was 7 million of these lands, but people are going to build as many decks as they're going to build. They need the damn lands. They need 3 million more to hit the 10 million total demand. That is just how many people want. Well, what happens when people want something that's not available? The price goes up. I mean, there you go. So eventually you'd see a $3 Aether Hub, then a $4 Aether Hub, then a $5 Aether Hub, then a $10 Aether Hub because people really want it and $10 isn't unreasonable because it's just a land and people are, you know, used to spending money on lands. Here's the funny part about that. Could they have set the initial price at, you know, $8 to $10 and pretended it was a rare even though it's in the uncommon slot? Yeah, probably because, like I said it only really upped the prevalence of the card by 1.5 times. So, you know, okay, drop the price a little bit, but still people want 10 million of them, so that's that. So the funny thing is the box EV would go back up, single sellers would be like, oh, how about that? And they would order more boxes, which hopefully theoretically would be there. They would then be printed and not the print order wouldn't be stopped. And then everybody would start buying them again at the higher price and it would kind of float back down again to a reasonable price. So no matter what price you set it at, no matter, you can put it in the common slot. It just doesn't matter. People want 10 million of them. So until you print 10 million of them, there's not going to be enough and the price is going to go up. So it seems to suggest that it, it's almost not important at all what rarity these nice color fixing lands are because people are going to buy them until the price is set. It's just single sellers in their heads thinking, oh crap, this is an uncommon it can't possibly be worth $10, you know, we're going to sell it at two. Like that would be the thing that would drive the price down. And they would just be, like I said, shooting themselves in the foot because they absolutely mathematically could get like eight to 10.
they just don't know it. And they all kind of play chicken with each other and make their best guess. And they're usually about 75% correct. Everybody and their grandma was wrong about Fatal Push. Uh, one, because they thought it was printed at triple the prevalence of a rare. No, it was about 1.5x. And two, it's the best kill card in all of Modern. Sort of. Depends on, you know, how you look at it. Honestly, I think Doomblade and Go for the Throat are about as good. But still, it costs one and it's an instant. I mean, if your deck's really, really fast, like a win on turn four deck, it is the best. If it's a win on turn 15 deck, it is absolutely not the best. At that point, it would become unreliable late game, and you might as well just spend the one extra mana, because hello, turn 15, you probably have the mana. Anyway, side rant done. Um, that card has not dropped below five bucks ever. Maybe it flirted with 475 on eBay or something, I don't know, but basically it's been five or six bucks since it was released. This is a standard, highly printed set uncommon. That itself is proof that, that you know, really good lands would, would maintain the price if single sellers weren't stupid and didn't all set them really low. So would it fix everything? Would it, you know, make one to two to three dollar ultra lands and everybody can build every deck and everything and everybody would be happy and instead of one deck, you could build four decks like you want to. Whoa, hit the brakes for a second. Did I just say instead of building one deck that everybody's going to build four decks because now it doesn't cost a hundred bucks for a mana base? Oops, let's take that 10 million and make it 40 million. Now they want 40 million copies of the card. Uh, but oopsies, it was only printed at 1.5 times the prevalence. Welcome to the $30 uncommon slot land. <laughs> now, would that really happen? No, not quite. See, that's why there's so many factors to this. It is mind blowing. Oh, I'm going to build four decks instead of one because I have four deck ideas and I like variety, which I'd say that's true about most people. You know, even net deckers, honestly. And look, the lands that I need are only $2 a piece. Cool. I'm going to order them. Whoops, there's not enough to go around. Price spike. I mean, so it would start going up and up and up and up and up. And at about $8, people would be like, you know what? Maybe I don't need that that fourth deck. I'll only build three. And then it hits like 10 bucks, and it hits 11 And people are like, you know what? I'm just going to build two decks. Or I'm just going to build one deck. Because the only reason I was going to build four decks in the first place is because the lands were cheap. And uh, the problem just, or the, the solution just caused the problem. It's like a paradox. It's like a loop. Welcome to economics. That's how it works. So the price would settle at some kind of intermediate amount and people would probably end up building two decks instead of four, but that's still double the demand and it's higher than it would have been if they were at rare and if they started at $10. So lowering the price would actually raise the price. It would raise the demand because people would think mentally that they could build more decks. They would attempt to drive the supply to like nothing people would have to open more boxes which would then kind of crash the price back down to something reasonable but at the end of the day theoretically the graphs indicate that it would be back at the prices if it was a rare so what the hell like could you print it at the common slot and it would still eventually reach ten dollars for the land because that's the price of the land honestly all factors considered pretty much yeah now, is that an absolute for sure prediction? Is that exactly what would happen if they shifted it down a rarity? No. I mean, like I said, there's so many factors. It is just mind warpingly difficult to predict what would possibly happen. Even with examples like Aether Hub, we still don't really know what would happen. I mean, it basically comes down to two factors. I mean, I know I said it's like 10 factors, but it's really two. One is people's perception. What should they be paying? What should the singles sellers start pre-selling them at on pre-orders? And then what do the players perceive is a proper amount to buy based on that perceived price? And then that would set the demand at a hard number, an actual flat quantity, and then everything would be based off of that. You know, the amount opened would have to get close to it or the prices would go up. So what I'm saying is if if they dropped, you know, the next, like the Amonkhet rares, which are, they are confirmed, they're rares. If they took those lands, the cycle lands, and made them uncommons, the only way that it would still be worth so much money is if single sellers realized that they could get away with it and sell it for the same price as if it was a rare. So the whole, oops, we're printing 1.5 times more per box, like literally that is more cards per booster box on average you know, more copies of each individual card. Um, but, you know, if it upped it by 1.5x, are people building more than 1.5x decks? I would say yes. So, theoretically, 
it would make them more expensive to drop them to uncommon. And the only way that that ball would get rolling is if people decided that they were going to build more decks and immediately demanded more of the cards. But then you loop back to like the single seller's not opening enough because the box EV would be so low and then the demand would go high so then they would open more and at a certain point Wizards just has to cut off the print run. So what I'm really saying is it would be an unpredictable disastrous mess and the prices would fluctuate like crazy because nobody would know what the hell is going on. That I think is the most accurate prediction of what would happen, unfortunately. So... <laughs> Hopefully this completely blew your mind because when I started thinking about it, I'm like, well, what about this factor? But what, wouldn't people do this? But in response, people would do this. And well, in another market like food or, you know, electronics or CPUs or, you know, something very static and predictable, um, you know, what, what would happen there? What has happened? Oh, but would that happen to magic or would people screw that up or would people underestimate this or overestimate this or would wizards do this? Would the players do this? So do I think they should drop it down from rare to uncommon? Just in principle to look like they're doing something nice? Yes, probably. It would be a bit of a PR stunt. Could it backfire and actually up the price? Maybe. Probably temporarily, but maybe. Would it be a fun experiment just to try? Hell yes. But what do you guys think? I mean, are there any factors that you think are overriding factors? Are any of the possibilities I proposed not sounding realistic to you? Or what's your best guess at what would really happen? And would you at least appreciate them trying to make the lands appear to be more, you know, accessible to the average player? And at least in the very, very short, short term, hopefully being cheaper by dropping it to uncommon? Or do you think they should just leave it at rare and they're completely spot on with that? And what do you think about the whole concept of propping up an entire set and boxes EV with rare lands? Because whatever there's a good land in it, the box is worth bare minimum max. And there's like a psychology to that too. If you ignore the rare lands in a set and the box EV after that is like $20, which yes, that has happened. Um, people say, well, at least even though all the cards are garbage, there's like two mythics worth money and maybe one foil. Like it's just a tragedy of a set, but at least it has, you know, five to $10 dual lands in it. You know, something like, like fast lands or fetch lands or just something really nice that people want. So people will be like, oh, you know, I just want f &M. What You know, what three packs or ten packs or however yours does it, which ones would you like, assuming they let you pick? And you would say, oh, give me this set because I know it's awful, but at least, at the very least, there are five out of 50. So one in ten shot at a dual land, even if it's like red, black, and I don't play that, I could put it in my binder and that is absolute guaranteed the most tradable card because everybody needs lands, everybody needs color fixing. Oh, FYI, let me just throw this in. This is why they haven't done a, a mono-heavy, like, mono mechanic. I feel like Amonkhet is going to be very mono-heavy, but there's nothing really stopping people from mixing colors. Just the cards seem really mono-heavy, and the mechanics are specific to one color, it would seem. But it's not like Theros, where it's like Devotion, where if you mix a color, there is an actual penalty for that. Like, you will, you will have less Devotion because of that, in theory. If they do print another mono heavy set, you got your $10 Nykthos uh, Shrine to Nyx cards, you know, but you certainly don't have five of them. And five is the magic number for any kind of dual rare fixing land. So they would be automatically taking out so much potential money from the set by making people play mono. Nobody would need an expensive mana base at all. Like that's why they haven't done it because multicolors sells sets it sells packs because people need the land fixing so that's why i don't think we're gonna see mono anytime again i i don't think we're gonna see three color pushed quite as hard as cons because that was a disaster and the game got too damn expensive because well it's like the you like the 10 million example people need 10 million lands oh wait now instead of playing two color they're playing three now they need 20 million but they're still in the rare slot welcome to the 20 to 30 dollar fetch land zone yeah, and then you get $1,000 decks. I mean, that's just, that is what happens. They really have to stop pushing three color quite so hard. I mean, even right now, we are lucky as hell that, um, you know, the mana bases don't cost two, three, four hundred. So that's why I think they don't push mono, because it, it just, it would lose them so much money just right off the bat. They'd have to put in some vicious, like, really sought after, like, spell lands, and I don't mean commons this time. Well, speaking of that, like, that is exactly what I anticipate they would do if they ever pushed a mono set again. They would just make five really good rare lands that just do something cool, like a man land or something. I mean to say, like, you wouldn't need color fixing, but you'd still want the lands because they're hyper-powerful and they're good. 
So anyway, uh, hopefully your brain's completely spinning over this and you're just completely dazed. Um, <laughs> leave your comment down in the comment section about what you think they should do. Should they ever do this? Should they leave them at rare? You know, what, what did you think about, you know, expensive mana bases? What do you think about the mana base now? Is it more appropriate? Is it comfortable? Is it still too expensive? Do you find yourself still not being able to build enough? Let me know. I'd love to hear everybody's comments on this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video. See you guys next